All right, now we need to uh, install the lower steering bearing race. Uh, best way to do it is just drop the race down into the gearbox, get it kind of lined up. Uh, then we usually use just an old socket and an old extension. It's just the same outside diameter as the bearing. That way you're not hitting down uh, in the or, uh, hitting down into the race where the balls are going to go. Just make sure to drive it all the way down so it's seated as, uh, as far down as it'll go. You can usually tell it'll start sounding a little bit different once it's bottomed out completely. And the lower bearing just drops down into the race. So always make sure that the lower bearing is centered and, and pointing straight up to the hole where the shaft is going to come down through. Now it's time to install the new steering shaft. You notice that most of the shafts that you get from us are going to come with a protective coating, almost kind of like a wax or a plastic. Make sure to cut all of that off. Uh, and then there's also a small, a little zip tie at the bottom. You want to make sure to get that off of there too before you install it. Alright, now it's time to install the upper bearing onto the steering shaft. Uh, just slide down from the top. Uh, normally, it'll go on uh, fairly snug. Sometimes you have to push it on there pretty hard. Just don't ever use the race to try to force the bearing down. Uh, it'll just make it go on even tighter. So uh, once you get that seated all the way down, uh, then it's time to put the lower bearing down into the gearbox and we'll be ready to install the steering shaft. Pretty much all of the Yanmar shafts are going to be a one-piece shaft like we showed. Uh, some of them though come as a two-piece shaft. And everything goes together exactly the same except when you install the upper bearing onto the uh, steering shaft. In order to do that on a two-piece shaft, you'll need to remove this roll pin right here and that will separate the two parts of the shaft. Then you can install your bearing uh, down there and then reinstall this roll pin. After that, everything goes together just the same. Now we're going to remove the race out of the steering tube. It comes out pretty much the same way as the race in the bottom of the gearbox. And then reinstall the new race the same way as the race in the lower gearbox. And the lower bearing just drops down into the race. So always make sure that the lower bearing is centered and, and pointing straight up to the hole where the shaft is going to come down through. And now you can see that the lower bearing is installed in the gearbox. It's centered in the race. Now it's time to put the shaft into the gearbox. You can see that the ball nut always installs with the teeth facing towards the sector shaft. And make sure that that lower portion of the shaft ends up going straight into the bearing. Now we're going to reinstall the steering tube. Uh, we're going to start off with five shims. That usually gets you pretty close, in the ballpark at least. And then we'll add shims or take shims out uh, as it's necessary to get the preload set right. And we'll just start all four bolts and just snug them up. Uh, don't, don't tighten them down all the way just yet. All right, we snugged up our bolts. Just turn the steering shaft with your fingers while you snug up the bolts just to make sure it doesn't bind. Uh, this one actually turned out just perfect with five shims. You see the shaft spins easy with your fingers, but there's not any up and down movement. Uh, if the shaft was hard to turn with your fingers, you need to add another shim, try it again. Uh, if you noticed any up and down movement in the shaft, uh, you need to take out a shim and try it again. Just a trial and error here. We just got lucky with five shims. It's perfect. It's time to install the sector shaft now. Basically, you just want to make sure that the teeth on the ball nut are lined up uh, in the dead center of the slot in this gearbox. Uh, you can see on this one, you probably need to go up just a little bit more. And you can do that by just turning the steering wheel or the shaft uh, left or right until this, uh, this gear goes up or down. And again, in this case, we just want to go up just a little bit. And whenever you slide the sector shaft in, uh, you may have to turn the steering shaft just a little bit to get the gears to line up. Uh, but then you 
push it on in there. It'd be a good time to go ahead and spin your steering wheel, make sure that you get a couple rounds of rotation. This will make sure that the teeth on the sector shaft are lined up with the teeth on the ball nut. Uh, if they weren't lined up right, you'd get a lot of binding after a round or so, and uh, just have to pull it back out, adjust it, put it back in, and uh, make sure that you get a good couple rounds of rotation out of the steering wheel. All right, now that we know that our sector shaft is lined up right, we're gonna go ahead and pull it out one more time, uh, install our new gasket, and then put it back together for good. And now we can go ahead and start all of our bolts and snug them all up. All right, now it's time to check our backlash, and the best way to do that is to turn your steering wheel back and forth. What you want to see is the sector shaft start to move as soon as you move the steering shaft. If you can turn the steering shaft back and forth and the sector shaft doesn't react right away, you probably need to tighten up the backlash a little bit. And the way you do that is to back off the lock nut a little bit and turn that screw in just slightly. Once you turn it in a little bit, uh, recheck it again, turning the steering wheel back and forth. And uh, it looks like this is probably going to be pretty good. If you turn the steering wheel and it was tight and you felt binding, it probably need to back this screw out just a little bit and increase the backlash. It takes a little bit to get this set up just right, but it could mean the difference between a rebuild that lasts a couple months and a rebuild that lasts several years. All right, our gearbox is rebuilt now. The last step is going to be to remove the oil fill plug and make sure to fill it up with uh, 80 or 90 weight gear oil and uh, should be good to bolt back on.